Good morning. It is Wednesday, the 17th of April, 2024, and it is just after 6 a.m. Yes, another day, another dollar. Just written a blog post there about getting a structural survey done for a house. I made a video there last week or the week before, and I published it on my YouTube channel, and the purpose of the video was to explain about the structural survey. So basically I was making the point that a structural survey is a private report that's commissioned by a purchaser of a second-hand house. And we would always recommend it. We would always recommend that you get a structural survey for a second-hand house. And the reason is you buy the house in the condition that you find it. So it's a good idea to find out what condition it's in. However, I was making the point that it's not a document of title, it's not a legal document. So if you have any questions about your survey, you should raise them with the architect or engineer or surveyor who carried out the survey. And I was pointing out that it's not a legal document, as I say, not a document of title. And there was quite a few qualifications, or there was quite a few um, comments on the video on YouTube saying that, or some people were saying that getting structural surveys uh, it was a waste of time, waste of money, because they're so heavily qualified with disclaimers and qualifications and so on that they are practically worthless. I don't agree with this. I think that is absolute nonsense, quite frankly. If you're going to pay 250 grand, 300 grand, 500 grand for a house, second-hand house, then the 300 quid or the 400 quid or the 500 quid that it's going to cost you to get a survey done is going to be money well spent unless it is completely and utterly worthless. And I cannot see, no matter how many qualifications or disclaimers are in the report, I cannot see how a report by a surveyor or an engineer is not going to flag up something of a benefit or value to you. And I cannot see how you cannot, as the purchaser, as the person who has commissioned the report, I can't see how you wouldn't ask the engineer or surveyor a question like this. Look, I've got your report. It's grand. You've taken plenty of photographs. I know how many rooms is in it. Is the property structurally sound? That's number one. Number two, is there evidence of any work having been done that's not covered by, for example, the planning permission? I'm aware that there was only the original planning permission for this property. Is there evidence of any extension, etc.? Three, what about the boundaries? Four, what about the septic tank? I cannot see, no matter how many disclaimers or how many qualifications might be in the structural survey, I cannot see how you, as a purchaser of a house, could not put those questions plainly and baldly to the person who commissions the report. And I think you will get answers, and I think you'll get answers that will be uh, valuable and will be well, well worth the 500 euros or whatever the report might have cost you. So I think this suggestion from certain uh, individuals who are saying that the survey is so heavily qualified with disclaimers and qualifications, rendering it practically worthless, I don't think that's the case. I think that's bullshit, quite frankly. Mm. OK, so what's on the agenda today? Three consultations again today. I do three consultations a day, every day, uh, five days a week anyway. So three consultations and the first one is a landlord and tenant dispute. So it's a commercial landlord and tenant dispute, not residential. And in this particular case, I'll be advising the landlord I don't think he's going to be happy with the advice I have to give him or the information I have to give him. But my job is to give him the best advice and the best information I can and not fill him up with a pile of crap. So that's the first one. Second thing then is we have a divorce case there in uh, Trim. So one of the girls here from the office will be going to attend counsel in that case and our client is uh, flying in from abroad for it, so hopefully that will go well. They have another consultation then at um, a little bit later. It's an employment situation. This person is a professional, has a pretty uh, responsible job and uh, is a health care professional and has difficulty or difficulties with her particular employment and her particular situation. I don't think she'll be happy either, quite frankly, with the advice I have to give her. 
but um, again I have to give her the best advice and not fill her up with uh, false hope or aspirations and stuff like that. The afternoon then I have uh, another consultation there and it's with a lady to do with family law, family relationships or family, uh, the relationship rather has broken down with the husband uh, or partner, I'm not sure which, and there are children involved so she's inquiring about uh, visitation or not so much visitation, access and so on. So she's uh, wondering about that and what are the rights etc etc and there may well be um, well, there may well be other factors there, but it's to do essentially with family law, access to children. And then finally, at four o'clock actually, I have a Zoom. I said I only did three consultations. This one is kind of special insofar as it's a Zoom consultation at four, and it is simply to uh, speak to two uh, young men, actually. Um, I think they're minors, or at least one of them is a minor, and the other one is just over a minor, and they have Irish connections, but... Uh, Unfortunately, their parents have passed away and they are. I have to speak to them, uh, see them and uh, witness certain documents, etc. So I have to satisfy myself that they are who they claim to be, etc, etc. I'm happy enough with that, but having said that, I still don't want to sign a document, especially a statutory declaration, confirming that I have met these people and uh, I'm f satisfied about their identity and so forth if I haven't met them. So I'm going to meet them by Zoom. Uh, and they are uh, outside the country, outside the jurisdiction. So that's the story there. Um, that's what we have on the agenda today. And it is a quarter to seven. So I'll work through my emails there now and um, get ready then for the first consultation, which is at nine o'clock. So that is the story. Americano. Americano, dark roast Americano. It's quite a nice coffee, I must say. It's uh, the one in Nomad now actually is quite nice. I prefer it to the others. There's three coffee shops here on this side of the street and it's a competitive environment. But uh, I've tried all three, Coffee Well, Black Dog and Nomad. And I prefer the Nomad one. Maybe it's just where it comes from. North Africa or wherever it is. But uh, anyway, we have the Ottoman Empire to thank for all of the coffee that came into Europe, which uh, originally would have came from apparently Yemen and places like that in Africa. I've listened to a very, very good podcast. There's a moment called Empire. Uh, it looks at various uh, uh, ramifications and consequences of empire, the Indian Empire, the Ottoman Empire, and so on. The... Uh, not the Indian Empire, the UK or the British Empire in India and the, the splitting then of India into two Pakistan partition basically, India and Pakistan um, and then the Ottoman Empire and the fall of the Ottoman Empire and the First World War and now we're on to the Sykes-Picot line and the Sykes-Picot line is the line that basically carved up the Middle East after the First World War it's an appalling situation and it's a situation that we're still living with today uh, the consequences of it with the whole issue of the uh, Israeli state, Palestine, uh, the Gaza Strip and all that. It's an excellent empire, an excellent uh, podcast, I'd strongly recommend it. Anyway, that is the story, I'll have to kick on now, we will here to do for a lady, so that is the next thing on the agenda. I'm watching a lot of videos there at the moment on YouTube, not today obviously, but occasionally I dip in and out of them, but um, the whole coverage of the Trump trial in the United States, the hush money to the porn star Stormy Daniels and another porn uh, person, a porn worker, um, the whole thing is fascinating. And at the moment, obviously, they're just going through jury selection and uh, it's, uh, it's really, really fascinating. But yesterday, Trump was going into court and, of course, he couldn't resist 
trying to spin a story to the waiting journalists. So even though he's probably not going to give evidence in court and open himself to cross-examination, he is trying to give evidence outside court to the waiting public, to the media, and trying to sort of paint or steer the narrative in that way. But yesterday he said that uh, I paid, uh, you know, my accountant, Michael Cohen, etc., and these were legal expenses, etc. How was I supposed to know what he was, what he was putting them down as, etc.? Uh, they were legal expenses. Uh, but when he started giving that explanation, he said, I, and then he switched it because he forgot the story. He said, my accountant paid, uh, gave the money or paid Michael Cohen. He wrote checks or whatever, and there were legal expenses. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I don't know what my accountant was doing, etc. But even at this late stage, he couldn't keep his story straight. In other words, he started off saying, I paid Michael Cohen. And then he said, oh, it wasn't me, it was the accountant. But the whole thing is fascinating, jury selection going on at the moment, the trial will go on for a while. But I saw one commentator, one commentator about the case yesterday, making a very valid point, and a point I hadn't really um, hadn't considered, but I, I think it's absolutely on the money. He was making the point that Trump is usual, or is used to running the show and being in charge, and he's used to doing his own thing. And he's used to deciding where he's going to go and who he's going to see and whether he's going to campaign or not and whether he's going to play golf or not. And he, he's lord of his own manner, as it were. And he's used to being the boss and he's used to being called sir and he's used to being deferred to. But in this criminal trial, he has no choice but to show up each and every day for perhaps six or eight weeks and sit in that courtroom. Because remember, he is the defendant. He doesn't have a choice. And he, sitting in the courtroom as the defendant, as the accused person, is not in charge. The judge is very much in charge. And Trump cannot come and go as he pleases. He must attend the court every day for six to eight weeks. And he has no choice. And he's not in charge. I think psychologically, and this was the point the guy was making in the video I watched yesterday, I think psychologically that's going to have a very significant impact on Trump because he simply is not used to, he's like a bold child being put into a schoolroom or a classroom and being told to sit there all day for eight hours and he's in junior infants or something. He's like that child and he's fidgeting and he's uh, glowering and he's muttering under his breath and he's falling asleep and so on. And to be honest, I really do believe that at the end of six or eight weeks of this, uh, Trump is going to, uh, there's a good chance he'll, he'll literally blow up. Uh, he'll go off on one or two because uh, it, this is such a different scenario for him. And we're not talking about a man uh, or a woman of 20 years of age or something who can adapt well to circumstances and change and who uh, is used to taking orders. We're talking about a man in his late 70s who uh, is not used to taking orders and is now being uh, forced, obliged to sit in the court all day, every day for months or for weeks. Uh, and he's not in charge, the judge is in charge. Uh, I think it's a fascinating study and I think it will be uh, really fascinating to see what impact it has on Trump's psyche as the trial progresses. Now I out for my postman to come. Brendan normally comes around 20 past 8 or half 8. So we need to see, let him in, buzz him in if necessary. It's a bit of a pain in the arse, quite frankly, having to buzz him in. And some mornings the door will open with a push, and some mornings it won't. So, no sign of him yet, anyway. I'd have to keep an eye out for him. And I see the van pulling up, and then uh, we'll make sure that he gets in. So that's the story. It's a bit of a nuisance. I could leave the door open there, I suppose, all morning, but I really don't want to leave it open from like early, you know, I probably could open it now already. Turn the uh, heating on there now. It's half eight. Warm up the office for the women coming in. Turn on the lights. There's no point me having the heat on here in this big office all morning when I'm only 
So this is the big office and this is where the girls would operate. This is the meeting room in here. This then is my own office. So no point in me having the heating going in the entire office full blast from six o'clock in the morning. It only makes sense to turn on the heater in here. Got a new electric heater there installed in this office. So it just means that I can work away without having to put on the heating out there full blast from six o'clock in the morning when there's nobody in here, you know. One o'clock there now, and just time to have the lunch. My own sourdough bread here. So, looking forward to that. It's lunchtime here, and I generally listen to the lunchtime news and I check out certain social media sites. One of them that I check out regularly enough would be Twitter. And some of the views and some of the opinions expressed on Twitter are absolutely remarkable. There is just so much misinformation, disinformation, lies, conspiracy theories, downright untruths that it is difficult to reconcile that the opinions are the opinions of thinking rational persons. It's really hard to get your head around or my head around that. And the frightening thing is that some of these conspiracy theorists, these spreaders of hatred and misinformation and disinformation, the remarkable thing about it being a democracy is that they have a vote just the same as you or me or anyone else. And it's really a frightening prospect. You always hope that the silent majority is uh, sensible and will make rational decisions and is capable of syllogistic reasoning, in other words reasoning based on uh, reasonable inferences being drawn from facts and so on, but in a lot of cases it is a futile hope, a futile exercise thinking that rational thought is going to prevail, but as I say that's all we've got, it's, uh, democracy is not perfect. It's imperfect, but it's the only game in town, in my view. The other thing that I'd say about social media, and I'm checking uh, Twitter there now, and it's a complete bloody cesspit, quite frankly, it's a sewer. But sometimes you come across something that's useful, and sometimes you come across something that's valuable and so on. But often it is pure nonsense. It is pure sewerage flowing through a massive unregulated pipe. The other thing is I get a huge amount of comments on my uh, various media or various social media pages. For example, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram and so on. YouTube and Facebook in particular would generate a lot of comments and I try and leave the comments as liberal and as uncensored and as unrestricted as possible. But sometimes I have to delete some, but generally I try and be as open and liberal as possible. But some of the comments are quite frankly 
indicative of seriously disturbed, unbalanced minds, incapable of rational thought and showing the intellect of radiator, quite frankly. But I let the comments out there, leave them there. TikTok as well actually is a good place for comments. So TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, the comments there are just incredible. I don't engage, I don't comment on them, I don't respond, and I have a great, great difficulty restraining myself and uh, declining or refusing to respond. Because if I got dragged in, it's the old adage that if you wrestle with a pig, you both end up covered with crap and the pig enjoys it. So I don't engage and uh, I do bite my tongue and it can be difficult, but I'm getting better at it. Thankfully, I'm getting better at it. And uh, that's in relation to the comments on, say, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, etc. One more consultation now at two o'clock today. I had two consultations there this morning. One was the landlord and tenant one, and the other was the employment one. And uh, great natural light here. That's my old place over there. My old petrol station there. It's a, an apple green there now. But it used to be shell when I was there. It used to be shell, and then it used to be top. That's my old petrol station over there. Yeah, two consultations this morning and uh, the landlord and tenant one went went well insofar as the information I was given was, in my view, spot on. The fella probably was disappointed that I had to say, or I said what I had to say, but there's nothing I can do about it. I have to call a spade a spade and give him the, the plain... Uh, the plain version of where you're at. One thing that um, surprised me, and I suppose it shouldn't have surprised me, was that he didn't actually tell me the whole story. And I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. I wrote a blog post about this last week about people telling me only part of the story. And uh, I can't understand why people do that, but they do. They come in here and they have consultations in person or by Zoom or whatever and they'll tell me only one side of the story and then you go off and you write a stinking letter to the employer and you're asking them what are they going to do. These circumstances that my client have described are appalling. What are you going to do? You're derelict in your duty. The duty of care is not being fulfilled, etc., etc. And then lo and behold, it transpires that there is a completely different story to be had and there's witnesses and what my man told me was complete rot. I don't know why people do that or what value they could possibly get out of the... Oh, geez, there's two nice dogs now. There's two nice dogs across the way there. I can't see the sense in the person coming to me and having a consultation and paying for it uh, and paying, you know, the fee which they have to do. Having a consultation by Zoom or in person and telling me only part of the story. Complete waste of bloody time. But anyway, that's their lookout. That's their problem. I mean, but the guy this morning hadn't given me the whole skinny, hadn't given me the whole story. And um, it didn't make any difference to me, quite frankly. I still had to give him the advice I had, and that was it. The other one then was the employment one. That went quite well as well. Again, I had to paint in fairly graphic terms, fairly plain terms, exactly where the person stood in relation to the employment issue, as I saw it. And let's face it, I mean, anybody can go off to a solicitor and get an opinion, and they can go to another solicitor and get another opinion, and go to any number of solicitors and get uh, any number of opinions. And maybe they'll be consistent, maybe there won't be a huge difference between them, maybe they, they will vary widely. All I can do is give the best opinion I can give based on the facts I'm given, so that's what I did. So that went well enough and I have one consultation now in the afternoon and my girl Kira is off at the uh, Trim Circuit Court in relation to a divorce. I haven't heard back from her, 
which is a bad sign, quite frankly, because I think we were a priority on the list for divorce hearings and I haven't heard anything so that may have gone pear-shaped or I may have got put back in the list or maybe there's negotiations going on haven't heard hopefully it'll work out okay but that remains to be seen anyway that's the story at lunchtime here in Terry Gurry and Company Solicitors on Main Street Enfield County Mead April 2024 and everybody's gone home for their lunch now and I'm just uh, finishing off this video I'll probably wind it up there now and uh, I might even start editing, might even start editing now. So that's the story. If you like this type of video, this type of day in the life vlog type video, let me know down below. And uh, I'd be interested in your comments. I'd be interested in your comments on YouTube especially. Thank you.